Hey, what's up, nerds? It's Paul here at Radio Free Hammer Hall. Today, we're going to talk about starting a Blades of Corn army. This is one of the most popular selections among armies in Age of Sigmar and has a lot of really cool models, cool fluff, and is, in general, just a lot of fun. So let's get into it. So it's an attractive choice to a lot of players. It was in the original Getting Started box for Age of Sigmar alongside Stormcast Eternals. Uh, it's had other dual boxes that it's been in. Uh, it has a lot of fantastic sculpts, really cool stuff in there. Um, one of the things that's a little bit of a challenge for new players is that it plays somewhat counterintuitively to what you would think the god of blood and war and skulls would be playing like. So it's more of uh, a sort of cagey, counterpunch kind of army, uh, as opposed to the really aggressive army that you would think it might be. And of course, Blood for the Blood God is the great slogan of Corn, and it's a lot of fun to scream that every time uh, a unit dies. So uh, let's take a look at our battle line options. So we have a decent number of options here for battle line for Corn. It's actually most of the units in the army that are battle line. We'll begin over on the mortal side with the Blood Reavers. They are a really bargain basement uh, option for you here. They're currently 70 points for 10 as of the time I'm recording the video. They're really good chaff. They can just get up there and get in the way. They can also be a really good glass cannon unit if uh, you stack a bunch of buffs on top of them. Uh, they can get up to four, five, six attacks each if you stack everything correctly and get them all in position. Our Blood Warriors, they're sort of our vanilla basic battle line. They're kind of Korn's uh, answer to Chaos Warriors and Liberators. Uh, very similar sort of role, idea, point value. They're just sort of a basic middle of the road, four up, save sort of battle line unit. They're not great, but not bad. Our conditional battle line over on the mortal side is our Mighty Skull Crushers. They are battle line if your general is uh, the Lord of Corn on Juggernaut. Um, they're pretty fast moving for Corn. Uh, they only move 8 inches, so it's not overly fast for an army in general, but they are one of your faster options in this army. They can do a decent amount of damage on the charge as well, uh, and they're very tanky. So they're an interesting option. Uh, they definitely do pop up in quite a few lists. Over on the demon side, we've got Blood Letters. They are a great glass cannon unit. They can do a nice bomb of mortal wounds. They're quick. They're nimble. They get in there and really can do a lot of damage to your opponent, but they don't take a punch very well. So they're going to be all about positioning and getting things in there. Uh, maybe have a chaff screen in front of them. Flesh Hounds are our next selection. These guys are fast moving. They're pretty punchy for what they do. And they have re-rollable charges base, which actually makes them really great for summoning. Uh, you can summon them onto the battlefield and then get a re-rollable charge, which makes their odds of getting that charge in. Uh, much, much greater. And the last is Blood Crushers. They are the general if... Uh, I'm sorry, they're battle line if your general is the Skull Master. Uh, they are really the demon answer to Skull Crushers. They are Blood Letters riding Juggernauts. They're pretty fast moving. They're cheaper than Skull Crushers, but definitely a lot less powerful. All right, so up next, let's take a look at hero selection. So Korn is lousy with heroes. There's a lot in the army, but these are, I think, the top choices for new players to be looking at. Number one is the almost an auto-include Blood Secrator. He has a 16-inch aura of plus one to attack. That is very, very powerful. 
Uh, Slaughter Priests, they get you access to your prayer lore and judgments, and in there you have some really strong options, including plus one to save, plus one to hit. The judgments are great for anti-magic and mucking up the board and doing damage. Um, our next one, Lord of Cordon Juggernaut, he is a decent combat hero on his own, and he unlocks Juggernauts as battle lines, so that is a really strong option. That is your Mighty Skull Crushers. Um, the Blood Stoker, that is another good option here. He can add three inches to run and charge for uh, one of your friendly units near him each turn, uh, and also reroll re ones to wound. Uh, Karnak, he gives you some free flesh hounds, and he's a decent combat hero in general, and buffs up your flesh hounds against his quarry. So other units to take into consideration here, Again, this is not a comprehensive list. There are some other things that are on the weaker side that aren't really worth talking about too much. Uh, Wrathmongers. They're a really strong melee unit. They're a little bit fragile with a 5-up save, but they also broadcast an 8-inch aura of plus 1 to attack. So that is great to kind of have them as a second or third wave behind your attacking troops they can buff up the troops in front of them and then when that uh, group of troops dies they can get into the battle themselves and do some damage skull reapers these guys are a pretty strong offensive melee unit and uh have a decent four up save and three wounds each so they can take a decent amount of damage um they're currently Right now, they're just overpriced, I think, and we'll see a lot more of them if they go down in a future General's Handbook. But for now, they're definitely a unit to consider, although they're in the same box as Wrathmongers, so I would definitely build the Wrathmongers over Skull Reapers right now. But, of course, that is subject to a points change. That's really not uh, that they have a bad scroll. And finally, our Bloodthirsters. These are your big monsters, your greater demons of corn. You know, I generally don't recommend that people pick up monsters when they're just starting an army. However, if you're going to, Bloodthirsters are your go-to selection. Uh, out of the Bloodthirster kit, you have three different options. They're all good in different situations and in different lists so i would read each scroll carefully before building your uh bloodthirster and see which one is going to be the best for the style of play that you're going to be running scarbrand is your unique uh bloodthirster he's a really powerful melee monster he's actually a fourth bloodthirster option outside of that main bloodthirster kit he is his own kit um he definitely can put a lot of power on the table and really take down a lot of enemies very quickly so that's about it for corn guys hopefully you enjoyed the video if so hit the like button subscribe for more if you're new here hit that notification bell to find out when all of our new videos are coming up if you'd like to support us on Patreon, our Patreon link is down below in the description, along with uh, my Twitter handle and our link to our Facebook group. So that's it for now, guys. I'll talk to you all later.